So let's tell Cursor, I want to be able to drag and drop these Tetris pieces onto the grid. It'll do a whole bunch of generating and then I can just save and apply these changes. And if we preview them, we'll see now we have it working the way we want. Hey guys, so I'm going to go through and show you how to get Cursor, the key features that it provides, and then how I kind of went through the workflow of building out this game, primarily using AI. So Cursor is an AI code editor. You can download it at cursor.com. It's based on Visual Studio Code, so if you use that, you should be pretty familiar with the interface. You can just go to pricing, and they actually have a free tier, so you can try it out and see how it works for your needs. So once you've got it downloaded, just open up Cursor and choose a directory that you want to start from. Since it's based on VS Code, we can use the same shortcuts, so I'm going to hit Control Backtick to open the terminal. And then they also have this chat interface for terminal. So if you hit Command K, you can open up this input field. And we're just going to type create a Vite project. And it's going to go ahead and populate the command we need in order to do that. So we can just hit enter here and go ahead and name our project, choose vanilla and JavaScript. Then we just run these commands that it recommends. So we'll close this, type cd Vite project npm install for our dependencies and npm run dev to start our project. So now if we open up this URL that it points us to, you can see we have our example project running inside the browser. So we'll just close our terminal and we can open this up and see all the files that it created for us. One thing I want to do is go into our main JS file. They're importing the styles here. I actually want to import them in the HTML, so I'm going to remove this and go into the HTML. And as we start to edit, you'll see it just recommends exactly what I want it to do. So you can hit tab to complete that recommendation. And now we have our styles loading inside the HTML instead of through JavaScript. So we're going to go through now and just empty out this JavaScript file since we don't need any of that. I'll also clean up and delete this counter JavaScript file since we won't be using that. And as you start typing, you'll see this recommendation of command L to chat. And so we're just going to hit command L and it brings up this side chat panel. So here you can actually see previous chats that you've made. It also has some other options like clearing the chat to start a new one, seeing the previous chats, opening it up as a tab in the editor. You'll also note inside of the chat box itself, it has the files it's referencing. And you can actually hit this plus button to select other files that you want to be referenced in your chat. Down below here, we actually have the model we're using. So we're using Claude 3.5. You can choose a different model if you want. If you go over to this code base part, you can actually choose how it's searching through your code. And we're using embeddings, which is the default. So let's ask it to create an eight by eight grid. You'll see we get a bunch of text here describing what we'll need to do, some code snippets, and then more descriptions. So here it's showing HTML and CSS. I actually don't like this approach, so I'm gonna go ahead and ask it to try again, creating them dynamically with JavaScript. So it adds this to the chat and gives us some more code recommendations on what we should do, showing the JavaScript here and the CSS below. I actually like this approach a lot better. We can go ahead and copy this code to paste it in, we can ask more questions of it in the chat, or we can apply this directly to our code. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply. It gives us this sort of diff view where we can accept or reject the code. I'm just gonna accept all here, and then we can do the same thing with the CSS and apply that to our CSS file. And it'll again show the difference view and we can hit accept when we want that code. So in the chat view, you have to go through and manually save your changes. You can see those update here with our grid. One other thing I want to do is change the styling of the grid. So another way you can use cursor is just by selecting things inline and hitting command K to edit the text inline. And you get this prompt in your editor. You can just type in the changes you want. So I'm just going to say, I want all of them to be the same color, white with a black border. And it's going to give us that same diff view it did before in line. And we can just hit yes on each of these snippets that we want applied to our code. 
then save your file and you'll see it reflected in your application. Cursor also introduced this thing called Composer, which you can access with Command I. So it looks just like a prompt bar that sits at the bottom of your screen, similar to chat, but you can actually open it up in an expanded view called Control Panel. So here, similarly to chat, you can just add all your files. We can go ahead and type in the prompt that we want. So I'm gonna actually have it create a new file, which is a JavaScript file that just contains a bunch of Tetris piece definitions. So the nice thing about Composer is it'll actually run across the entire application. It can create new files and you can apply all the changes at once. So here you can see it's generating the JavaScript for it in the main view. You can also see changes it's making to other files. And on the right side, it kind of describes what it's doing. So you can go click on these files on the left side and see what it changed. It has the import here for this new JavaScript file in the main JS file. And then here are the definitions and colors. You can accept them each individually or reject them. You can also accept all and apply them all at once. And then we can read through and see what it did. Here it's saying how it defines the Tetris pieces, um, the colors, and created those in the Tetramino.js file. It updated the main.js file as, and then made sure that our index.html is using modules. Next, I'm going to ask it to actually render some of the Tetris pieces. So let's have it show a bank of three pieces below the grid. So now it's updating the main JS file and updating our CSS as well. And on the right side, it's describing all the changes that was made to the file. So you can go into each of these files and see the recommended changes. They also have the diff view, so you can go through and see the code that was actually updated within each file. So there's the CSS that was added as well. And of course you can apply all, but you can also hit save. So this is really cool in that it allows you to preview the changes. So let's go into our main file and hit save as well. You can see what it's going to look like before accepting the change in your code. And that way you can go through and reject it. So I don't really like how this looks. I'm going to reject it. So let's go through and reject all. And then I'm going to type, let's try it again, but make sure that the Tetris pieces look correct. Cool, so it's changing the main JS, going through and updating that, it's generating the styles, and let's go through and see how this looks. So let's go through and save the CSS changes, and the JavaScript changes as well and see how this renders. So it's still a little weird, but I'm gonna say this is okay for now. So I'm just gonna accept this and then have it make incremental changes. So let's accept all. And now let's just say the blocks don't look quite right. Let's see if we can fix it. So it's making some changes to the JavaScript and CSS mostly removing its use of CSS grids, it looks like. Let's preview those, and these look pretty good. So let's go ahead and accept those. So next, I wanna be able to drag and drop the Tetris pieces onto the grid. So let's just go ahead and ask it to do that. So that's generating, it's updating main.js. And now it's updating our style sheet. 
let's go through and look at the style changes. So it just adds some minor style changes and then add drag and drop events to our JavaScript and then handles those events on the board. So let's go ahead and save those, go into our styles and save those as well and see how it looks. So as you can see, now we can drag and drop these onto our board. Cool. So let's go accept all. And that's pretty much the workflow that I've been using with Cursor. I think it's a pretty cool tool for working with AI within an IDE. Because it's integrated into an IDE, I don't really think of it as like a no code tool or a tool for like non coders. Um, mostly because you're going to want to be familiar with the IDE. It is going to make mistakes. You're going to want to kind of understand what it is it's doing and how the code works. And I actually think it works best using it iteratively. So I've gone ahead and asked it to like generate a whole bunch of code at once. It'll try to do it, but it'll often screw something up. So I think it's better working with it piece by piece and actually recommending how you want your code structured and specifying when you want things in different files because it will try and jumble things together into one giant file and be very challenging and difficult to read if you don't prescribe how you want things structured. But I think it's a great way to integrate this and work iteratively with AI in like a coding environment. Um, and it's really exciting to see how these things are coming together. So I actually went through and built out the whole thing using some artwork that I put together in mid journey as well. So here you can see, I just did UI interface designs inside mid journey. Um, I just picked the one that I liked, upscaled it and then saved that out. And then I brought that into Photoshop so that I could isolate one of these images and then using shortcut M and the circle marquee tool, hold down option to select from center command J to copy to a new layer, then we'll just copy that and paste it into a new document. Then you can go ahead and save that out. So after updating the styles and incorporating the images and going back and forth with AI over this quite a bit, which was actually a bit of a struggle in some cases, it would just kind of break things. Um, I was ultimately able to get it working the way I wanted and getting things organized in separate files appropriately. And so here you can see the end result of being able to drag pieces on and having them kind of snap to the grid as well as the correct behavior. So the way the game really works is once you get a complete row, it will then clear that row. So you can see there that row was cleared. I'll provide links to the game and to cursor all in the description below.